Hello and welcome to the Chapter 4 podcast in Section 4.2. Today we're going to be talking about precipitation reactions. Precipitation reactions are basically a reaction that results in the formation of a product that is not soluble in water anymore. So it's a solid that comes out of solution. Um, and this is illustrated here on the figure on the right. Um, we can look at chemical reactions and we can actually predict the formation of certain precipitates because we have solubility rules. It's solubility rules basically tells us how how much of a substance can to be dissolved in a certain amount of solvent at certain temperatures. As the temperature changes, the solubility tends to change. Um, for predicting a precipitate, basically when we um, put together our products in the reaction, once we put together our cations and our anions, we apply the solubility rules, which you guys were supposed to memorize over the summer, to determine whether or not we have an insoluble product. Usually you're only going to end up with one insoluble product, not two. Up here uh, in this slide you see uh, uh, another rendition of the solubility rule, so you should memorize these again. If you have already forgotten, you might want to remember uh, not only what's soluble and what is insoluble, but also all of the exceptions because they probably will come up in some form on the AP exam. Um, one kind of reaction that often results in the formation of a precipitate or exchange or metathesis reactions. Sometimes these are also referred to as double replacement reactions as, as, as what we called them in honors uh, chemistry last year. So here we have two ionic compounds that are both soluble in water and the positive and negative ions basically um, exchange um, partners. Okay, So if we have ionic compound AX and ion compound BY, uh, A and B are positive ions and they separate because remember they're soluble in water and the negative ions basically switch so A combines with Y and B combines with X. Now the reason why this has to happen uh, is because remember you have to have a positive and negative ion come together. You cannot have two positive ions and you cannot have two negative ions come together. Okay, a more specific example is shown here where we have um, AgNO3 plus KCl. So AgNO3 separates into K, Ag plus and NO3 minus. Uh, KCl separates into K plus and Cl minus. Um, K combines with the NO3, Ag combines with the Cl minus, and we get our compounds. Based upon our solubility rules, we know that silver compounds are insoluble. So that's why this is the solid, and if you looked at your solubility rules, you know that all nitrates, especially ones with alkali metals, are always soluble. Okay, So we're going to use our chemical formulas. We break them apart on the reactant side, and then we recombine them to form our new compounds on the other side. After that, you balance the equation. Okay, So here's an example. So here we have solutions of Fe2. SO43, which is iron 3 sulfate and lithium hydroxide mixed together. Again, when you write the reaction, remember that the, the iron sulfate breaks up into iron and sulfate ions. LiOH breaks up into lithium and hydroxide ions. Iron will form a compound with OH minus, uh, and lithium will form a compound with sulfate. We know based on the solubility rules that the iron uh, hydroxide compound will be the precipitate, and the lithium sulfate will be aqueous. And then we complete. We come up with the products first. Remember, when we're coming up with these compounds, we have to balance the charges because the overall charge of these ion compounds have to be zero. And then after that, we balance. Um, in addition to the way we express these um, equations, we can also express them in different ways and kind of take into account what's actually happening in water. What we've been doing in the previous slides up to this point are molecular equations, so everything's together as a molecule. We know that things that are ionic compounds in water are not going to be present in this form that's represented by the molecular equation. What we need to do is we need to break it up. Um, we can express it in a different way using a complete ionic equation. So what we do here is anything that's aqueous will dissociate into positive and negative ions. So anything that has an AQ. But anything that's solid, liquid, or gas, like the PBI2, is not, you cannot separate. And the reason why is because it's, it's not in solution. It's in a different state of matter. Okay. 
If you look at this complete ion equation, uh, ionic equation, you'll notice that there are some ions that appear on both sides of the equation. So from a chemical reaction point of view, they didn't really become anything different from what they were to start with. So we call these ions spectator ions. So the nitrate and the potassium ions are examples of spectator ions. We can take complete ionic equations and we can eliminate these spectators and come up with a net ionic equation. So this one is a, a third way to express a chemical reaction just showing what actually became different. Okay? Um, if every ion shows up on both sides of the equation, like if there's no precipitate and everything's soluble, then it's a no reaction. So it's another way to help us kind of understand whether or not we actually see a chemical change when we mix ionic compounds together. Uh, the purpose of net ionic equations, they can illustrate, um, you know, um, differences between electrolytes. Um, we can also have uh, more than uh, one reaction give us the same net ionic equation. So sometimes we can substitute in different aqueous uh, compounds if they have a common ion. So for instance, if we had Ki and we substituted with magnesium iodide, they would both produce iodine anions. So sometimes we can we can substitute if if we need to, and this is more of an operational thing. Um, we can also um, look at what actually changes in a chemical reaction through net ionic equations. You'll also have to be able to do this on the AP Chemistry exam in the reaction section. So it's something we're going to be spending a lot of time on. Uh, writing net ionic equations, start with the molecular equation first to make sure you have all the states of matter. Uh, what is solid, what is aqueous, liquid, and gaseous. Then you rewrite the equation. Start with the complete ionic equation first. Separate all the ions that are aqueous. Do not break apart any compounds that are um, solid, liquid, or gas. We identify the spectator ions and then we can cancel them out, leaving us with the net ionic equation. Here's an example of one. So let's say we have silver nitrate and potassium phosphate mixed together. I write out the formulas first for both compounds. I write out the molecular equation. Remember, Ag plus will combine with the phosphate. K plus will combine with the nitrate, resulting in the formation of our insoluble silver phosphate and our soluble potassium nitrate. Once I have the, the molecular equation, I can write the complete ionic equation by separating the aqueous species. So anything that has an AQ gets broken apart into positive and negative ions, and the solid stays intact. You'll notice that the potassium and the nitrate are spectator ions. We can eliminate those from both sides of the equation, and that will give us our net ionic equation, which we see on the bottom. And uh, we'll do some more of this in class as well. And until next time.